Hi, this is Nick Forster. We're going to share one of our favorite E-Town shows from the archives, and it starts right now. Live from E-Town Hall in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, it's E-Town with this week's guests. From Asheville, North Carolina, the John Stickley Trio, Achievement Award winner Arif Khan, and originally from Michigan, now living in Nashville, Billy Strings. I'm Helen Forster. Right now, join me in welcoming our host, Nick Forster. Thank you, Helen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to our guest, E-Tones, Hunter Deacon on the drums, and Royal Massad on the bass. We're going to have some fun this week. We've got uh, a musical feast led by two young acoustic guitar players who also play other instruments and who love old bluegrass songs, but also listen to and played lots of other styles of music. Uh, they can tell you exactly what uh, J.D. Crow and Slayer have in common, for example. <laughs> Um, they both write songs, and they like to jam, and they have new records out. So it's going to be a good one. Up first, a remarkable young player I've gotten to spend some time with over the last few years, Billy Strings, a name given to him by his aunt when he was a little kid. He is now a full-fledged musical powerhouse in his mid-20s with lots of energy, discipline, and talent, a good combination. He's also lived a lot in his time. He's uh, seen his friends uh, go down the road of addiction and prison, and he's seen hard times growing up in Michigan. Mostly, though, he's just got a great uh, musical head start because his dad was his musical mentor and partner. I sat around playing fiddle tunes on acoustic guitars since he was a little budding musician. His dad is also a, an accomplished guitar player and singer who loves Doc Watson and Norman Blake and folks like that. Anyway, it's all in there. It's in there pretty deep. His first record, really, that features his songwriting has just come out. It's called Turmoil and Tinfoil. Please welcome, along with his band, for his first visit to E-Town, Billy Strings. It's real good to be here. I ain't slept in seven days. I have an eight in three. Methamphetamine has got a damn good hold of me My tweaker friends have brought me to the brim of no return I just took the lighter to the bulb and watched it burn This life of sin, life of sin has got me in it's got you. Well it's got me back in prison once again I used my only phone call to contact my daddy I got 20 long gears for some dust in a baggie I wouldn't be locked up in prison, troubled in the head I took that little pop and sucked until my mind was spun But I got 20 years to sit and think of what I've done This life of sin, life of sin has got me in it's got you. But it's got me back in prison once again I used my only phone call to contact my daddy I got 20 long years for some dust in a bag. Blues have got me singing this hot song My life is a disaster, Lord, and I feel so ashamed In here where they call me by a number, not me This life of sin, life of sin has got me in it's got me Well, it's got me back in prison once again I Use my only phone call to contact my daddy I got 20 long years for some dust in the baggie I use my own phone call to contact my daddy I got 20 long gears for 
We thank you all so much for being with us today and uh, so glad to be here on E-Town. I know so many of my good friends have been on the show and it's a really great show. Here's a song that I wrote, kind of about some fella maybe who's sitting in prison, uh, maybe thinking about his girl on the outside, wondering if she's going to be there when he gets out. It's called While I'm Waiting Here. It's been over 30 days And I've not received a letter Now my fingernails are chewed down to the bone So many different ways I've tried to say I'm sorry While I'm left here in this 8 by 10 alone It's not the four walls moving in that tortures me It's not the cold cement who shivers down my spine It's just them visions in my head that make me paranoid and wonder if when I get out will you be mine I never should have treated you so bad my love I'm sorry I was broke but I can see that now it's true my picket fence has turned to razor wire And now I'm waiting trial For things you have to know I did not do If I could get a word with you I'd be just fine Or any envelope with both your name and mine Would be enough to keep me going In a world where I'm left knowing There's something more to live for just outside Seems like the last time Feels like the first Though I've had bad days, this has to be my worst I'm left thinking of you, dear, while I'm waiting here Since it rested on your shoulder while we walked along that vacant riverside They carried me away to a place where I'll grow older If I cannot prove to them you never die Seems like the last time, feels like the first Though I've had bad days, this has to be my worst I'm left thinking of you, dear, while I'm waiting here
the first Though I've had bad days This has to be my worst I'm left thinking of you, dear While I'm waiting here Man, that sounds good. <laughs> Billy Strings and his band. Beautiful songs, happy sounding songs about loss and prison and meth. <laughs> right? No, that's true. I, I really appreciate the fact that you're sort of stepping out as a songwriter, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but I, I want to get to the beginning, you know. So I understand you're named after your grandfather. Yeah, I was born on his birthday. You know, we were a resident of Kentucky at the time. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad and stuff traveled up for grandpa's birthday, and apparently they were all in the garage kind of picking and singing, and my mom was not taking part. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, I decided to show up, you know. To, I, I guess I wanted to come pick a few, but... Yeah, a little early. <laughs> yeah. He was ready. Um, was your grandfather a musician, too? He played with his thumb yeah. until it turned black, and he would sing, like, Angel! And he would sing, like, uh, old country songs, yeah. you know. Let's see. You don't have to call me darling, darling. darling. He would sing that. <laughs> And uh, so when you're a kid, and your dad, as I understand it, was, as I mentioned earlier, was a fan of Doc Watson and Norman Blake and Stanley Brothers and could sing all that stuff, too. Yeah. Were you just going along in the same kind of musical path? Or? I just wanted to be just like my dad because I saw we'd have people over at the house, you know, yeah. picking and singing. And I'd, every once in a while, I noticed my dad in the kitchen, and he's just, you know, singing till his face turned red, and he's just like... He really is the life of the party, and everybody is so glad that he's there, and there's so yeah. much joy. And I just was like, man, my dad is incredible, and I want to do that. You know, I want to yeah. learn how to play like him. That's what I want to do, you know? That's cool. Yeah. So um, I want to come back to the songwriting piece, because as I mentioned at the top, your songs are about um, people going to prison. And, you know, the title song, you know, Turmoil and Tinfoil talking about lighting the meth pipe and you know so was that the mm. world you were around and that's what was going on around I was you? exposed to some substance abuse when I was younger yeah and you know I think you are if you live in small town America if you live in a tiny little town where there's nothing to do that's kind of what happens and a lot of my friends kind of went down you know I was pretty close to kind of going down the wrong path myself but music gave me something to focus on. And I just saw where everybody was headed. And I, was, I don't want to do that. I want to do good. I want to focus on something. So I just started buckling down and really practicing on my guitar. And yeah. So that's why, you know, I've ended up writing about stuff that I sort of feel strongly about. And I grew up in a town called Ionia. There's seven prisons there, you know. There's wow. like three stoplights, you know. Uh, it, it, I knew people that ended up locked up. I knew people that overdosed. Wow. You know, a lot of my friends went down. High school was weird, man. Yeah. Um, in case you just tuned in and you're listening to E-Town, I'm here with Billy Strings. Um, the one thing I do want to mention and ask you about, you know, I don't think any bluegrass singer or songwriter would have had the courage to include a tune like Spinning, as you did on your record. It's risky. It's risky, but it's also must be important to you to share that story. Yeah. Uh, it's basically the saga of your psychedelic journey and what you learned on that. So That's exactly what it is, and that's all that it is. I always wanted to do like a spoken word track and I was just I, t I told that story to my close friends all the time you know people that I think need to hear it almost and so I decided to maybe you know just make some weird sound effects and just tell that story mm -hmm. like it was and so yeah I think it is super risky but I don't know there's nobody here to tell me what I can or can't put on my records so I think uh well, and also, uh, just to the Cliff Notes abbreviated version of this amazing journey with this female form where her skirt's made out of eyeballs and then ears and then teeth. and I'll tell um, you all about it, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, I mean, the beautiful thing is she takes you on this journey through all the universes and back into our universe and around our planet, and then she shows you in this grain of sand that this energy is still spinning and that we're all connected. It's so. all the same, yeah. We're all part of this one big thing, and we're, we're, we think we're kind of special because we stand up and have opposable thumbs, but really, we're not. And uh, 
We need to learn how to exist. Yeah. And I know you have that in you to try to make things better in I some way. I do want to try to do that. You know, I'm always thinking about that. If I'm out here playing 200 gigs a year, I kind of want to do something positive. Right. And the only thing I have is my guitar to fight back against all that ugliness. So I, that's what we do. You know, we try to just bring joy the way my dad did at the little house parties, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a, uh, it's a winning formula to get out there and try to make something good happen and to have yeah. the talent and the opportunity and the drive and to have a great band with you, too. These guys are really great. These guys are yeah. freaking amazing. Yeah. Well, listen, I am, uh, I am impressed, young Billy Strings. <laughs> We've been hanging around a little bit these last few years. We and love just, you, man. Thank you. Love you, too. We, uh, we're going to get back to music. Welcome back, if you would, Billy Strings. Thank you. And his band. This is the title track off our album that we came up with. If you've ever had somebody that you love dearly that was maybe addicted to drugs, then you might be able to relate a little bit.
Strings, along with Jared Walker on the mandolin, Royal Massad on the bass, Billy Failing on the banjo. The record's called Turmoil and Tinfoil. These guys will be back to play a lot more music later on in the show. This portion of E-Town is made possible by the Bohemian Foundation, building stronger communities through the Bohemian qualities of creativity and imagination. On the web at bohemianfoundation.org. As a reminder, for your viewing pleasure, there are over 2,000 videos on the E-Town YouTube channel, where you can also subscribe in order to stay up to date with our latest offerings. And if you're curious about E-Town's home base, E-Town Hall, our beautiful solar-powered music venue, community center, and recording studio located in downtown Boulder, Colorado, you can learn more about it on our website, etown.org. You're listening to E-Town. I'm Nick Forster. You're listening to E-Town. Billy Strings is going to be back later on in the show. And coming up, the John Stickley Trio is here, and they're going to play a bunch of music, too. Before we uh, bring them out, though, every week, we get a chance to introduce you all to someone we get to know with the help of our listeners. And uh, these are always just stories of folks looking around where they are and finding ways to make things better, make a difference in some way. Uh, we give these folks some recognition on the air in hopes that other people will be inspired by what they do and maybe support them or replicate the work they're doing. But in any event, we've been doing it a while. It's the Achievement Award. And uh, here comes Helen to tell you about this week's winner. Thank you, Nick. Our Achievement Award winner this week is Arif Khan, formerly of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, give it up for Arif. <laughs> As I said, he's a great guy, by the way. Formerly of Portland, Oregon, now living in upstate New York. Years ago, Arif was doing a 10-week city planning internship in Mobile, Alabama, when an unused parking lot he often walked by made him wonder what could be done if the pavement was removed. Well, later, Arif moved back to Portland, Oregon, and he by chance saw a bumper sticker that said, quote unquote, pavement is forever, which he took as a personal challenge. Shortly after, he ended up buying a home, oddly enough, that had a backyard that was completely paved over. So he recruited some friends. They transformed that concrete yard into a garden oasis. From there, they began organizing what they called depaving events. Out of that, the nonprofit Depave was born, and its goal is to rip up overpaved 
urban areas to make way for green spaces that benefit the community at large. Now, an impressive number of these dead spaces have been converted into usable living gardens and gathering places. And Arif's here with us to tell us about how depaving works and how this effort has transformed several cities at this point. So please welcome our award winner this week, Arif Khan. Arif, welcome. Well, thanks. Depaving sounds like a pretty radical, disruptive concept. Yeah, yeah I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so this was something that just made sense to you as you were in Alabama originally, right? That was yeah, the sort of yeah. original inspiration. Mobile, Alabama, it suffered from white flight, so a lot of the resources went outside the city, left a trail of dead open parking lots, right? And I would yeah. walk by these things and thinking, God, you know, something better can be done. Yeah. So now you're in Portland and you're, you bought a house with a paved backyard and you decided that this is an opportunity. Yeah. Did you get your friends together and then just like break stuff? And uh, Pretty much. Um, <laughs> I mean, this house, no one wanted to buy it because everyone wanted a little garden. And I thought, okay, this is beautiful. It's a blank canvas. I'm going to destroy it and, uh, and create a garden. Wild. So do you get jackhammers and stuff or how do you take We didn't the know what we were doing, actually. Yeah. I, I asked... <laughs> I asked everyone, and that's how DPAVE was born. I looked online, I looked for resources, I asked local contractors, and I couldn't find anything on the web. So I just, oh, I'll take what I've learned, my friends and I, just yeah. hacking at stuff with jackhammers and sledgehammers and big pry bars and, wow. and kind of document it. Yeah. So it's your backyard. Your friends are all coming over and breaking a bunch of stuff and jackhammers and you know, sledgehammers. And then you've got a giant pile of rubble. What do you do yeah. with that? It's like a... Clever move on my part. I convinced my neighbor to take the concrete chunks and use them as a planter for his garden. So, um, like a retaining, totally used, build a retaining, a retaining wall. wall. Yeah, oh, and wow. I gave away, you know, on Craigslist, it said free paving stones. Um, <laughs> right? Was that a Huck Finn move? Right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. You know. So that's wild. So other people came and hauled all your stuff away. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. wild. Right. Amazing. And then what did you do? Put down sod and make a lawn uh, or something? Or? I was more into food. Oh. Yeah. I wanted to grow fruit and vegetables. So um, we actually got wood chips from local arborists, kind of fed the soil and uh, added organic matter and chicken manure and stuff and started planting trees. And now there's fig trees, blueberries, plum trees, Wild. peach trees, a pomegranate tree. You know. Wild. Yeah. So let me just ask you a question about when you're tearing up something that's paved, is it always paved with the same stuff? Because it seems to me that I see stuff that's like Maybe uh, there's a difference between concrete and asphalt, or I don't know. Yeah, what, what they're, they're two different materials. Asphalt is oil, petroleum-based, and concrete is sand, cement. cement right, yeah. right. And do you dispose of them in the same way, or how do you get rid no, of them? No, actually, um, concrete we typically reuse, or it's reused as fill, and asphalt is actually recycled. It's the most recycled product in the world. Wild. So, yeah. Just heat it up and make more. Yep. So there you are. You've already converted your backyard into this oasis with all these fruit trees and everything. And then you said, okay, well, that was fun. Let's destroy some more stuff. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, found a friend of a, a friend that owned a coffee shop with this big parking lot. And I was like, what are you doing with that parking lot? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, how about we tear it apart? <laughs> and uh, she was warmed up to the idea. And uh, now it's this great garden. It's been there for about 10 years. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So... Um, your project did kind of take off, right? It did. It did. There was a lot of support. And um, I'm really thankful to all the great volunteers and uh, folks that have made DPAVE possible. Yeah. I guess I started it, and, but I had other friends that took it further and created yeah. an organization around it. Has there ever been a situation where you've ripped up a parking lot and then somebody said, wow, I really kind of wish I had a parking lot still? No. I mean, how often do you go to a, an amazing city and say, you know, I love the parking lots in Paris. I love right. the parking lots in, you know, <laughs> who says that? You Nobody know? So, says that. Right. right. Some people yeah. are like, oh, now I have to park further. But yeah. you know what? It's yeah. fine. A lot of people don't know that, but pavement's responsible for a lot of water pollution in a lot oh, yeah. of cities. So, Because the water the, doesn't, the runoff goes. The runoff from our cars, from the oil, from the heavy metals, from brake pads, arsenic, you know. Mercury, that all flows into streams and affects uh, water quality. And otherwise, it would be sort of filtered and processed, essentially, through yeah. the natural process of, you know, the hydrologic cycle in, right. the, in the dirt. Yep. And there's ways to break down, like, hydrocarbons and chemicals using plants. And That's so wild. Water. So um, 
any uh, specific types of people who get involved in these projects? Just it's been wide ranging. You yeah. know, we've got young folks and we try to put everyone to work regardless of their physical abilities. You know, we like to put kids to work. We're yeah. a big fan of child labor. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, it's hands-on, getting do kids to do physical things, getting them away from screens, yeah. getting them away from computers and mm -hmm. iPads. It's a, it's a positive thing for kids, and kids like to break stuff as much as I do. So, right. you know. so uh, how many volunteers or how many kids or folks have been involved with the DPAVE uh, movement so far? So our model is one to keep the organization itself small and be very open source and to encourage others to replicate and learn from what we've done. So in Portland, we've had about 4,000 volunteers. We've created over 50 new green spaces. And often these green spaces are in uh, lower economic, socioeconomic areas that don't have much access to right. natural areas. So we prioritize like that. So we've had 4,000 volunteers in Portland. Now we've got chapters in Nashville and Cleveland, a uh, few Amazing. groups in Canada, near Seattle and the Puget Sound. Wow. And, and I can only imagine that... If you convert a vacant parking lot to something that has suddenly become a verdant a garden oasis or even just a community garden or a place to hang out, that's also going to change the tenor of the neighborhood a sure. little bit, change the opportunity for people to interact with each other. Yeah. I mean, that's why we use the model we use of yeah. full community involvement. We use a lot of manpower versus machines. So that brings people together and they have a literal hands-on experience right. creating spaces and neighbors get to meet each other. And, uh, we've seen neighborhoods transform, not just from an environmental perspective, but a social perspective. Yeah. So when we come in and actually transform a paved lot into a garden, I think there's something that's triggered in people that they feel like, oh, anything's possible. Right. And this model is a very practical demonstration that things that are hard and firmly entrenched right. can be repurposed or removed or destroyed and reborn in some way. As an exercise, I really see the value in it. Well, thanks. You know, how many square feet have you transformed so far? Who knows, right? Yeah, it's uh, 150,000 square feet in Portland, plus wow. the other thousands of square feet yeah. other places, and yeah. that's millions of gallons of stormwater pollution that's prevented from going into streams. So. Right. And recycling a lot of asphalt along the way. Yeah. yeah. Hey, is there a website if people want to see pictures or learn more? Depave.org. D-E-P-A-V-E dot O-R-G. Listen, I really appreciate you coming by, and congratulations to this week's Achievement Award winner, RF Khan, founder of Depave. Depave dot O-R-G. Transforming paved spaces into gardens and other spaces. Congratulations, RF. Now, if you just tuned in and you missed part of this interview, feel free to listen to it on our website, etown.org, where we also have DPAVE's contact information if you happen to miss that just now. And if you want to nominate someone doing great work to better the lives of others or this planet that we all share, we want to hear from you. You can find out how to do that on our website as well by heading to our homepage and clicking on the word award at the far right of the top menu. And of course, you can always write us the old-fashioned way at Box 954, Boulder, Colorado, 80306. Thank you, Helen. RFCon, dpave.org. Pretty cool story. We've got more music coming up from Billy Strings and his band in a little while right now. I'm going to tell you about our next guest, John Stickley. was born in Durham, North Carolina, grew up around uh, Chapel Hill. He's been playing music for quite a while, but he came to the uh, sort of bluegrass acoustic music a little later in his musical path than uh, Billy Strings did, for example. And for him, as far as I know, it was the David Grisman Quintet's first record with Tony Rice playing guitar that kind of opened his ears to a whole other way of playing acoustic guitar. Played in a bunch of different bands, and one day going to a gig, the bass player didn't show up, and the idea of a trio made sense all of a sudden, and that concept continued to this day. So he has championed this unique trio format with uh, violin, guitar, and drums, and with great results. And the latest record was uh, co-produced by Dave King, who's the really amazing drummer who plays in the band uh, Bad Plus. And again, sort of features the original compositions and, and unique playing of this particular trio. So they're here also for their first visit. Please welcome to E-Town, John Stickley Trio.
John Stickley Trio. Yep. Lindsay, I know you're cheating over there. You got a bass pedal or something on your fiddle, don't you? I've got a little bass in a box here. That yeah, is true. Yeah, let me, let me hear what that sounds like. Of course, playing through the bass amp also helps with that, but... Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> if anybody's wondering, that's where that's coming from. Yeah, okay. That can be as heavy as, as any heavy bass player can be. You could be in Spinal Tap with a rig like that. <laughs> hey, um, John, so you were not hanging around at bluegrass festivals when you were a kid, were you? No, I didn't get lucky enough to go to one until I was about uh, 17. 17, yeah. yeah. Is that around the time that you first heard the David Grisman Quintet record? Or? Yeah, probably 16, 17. Yeah. Uh, just was taking guitar lessons and... Um, actually, there was a banjo player taken from the same teacher, and his name was Andy Thorne. He lives oh. in Colorado now. We know Andy Thorne, yeah. He was the one that gave me the David Grisman CDs. So. Oh, cool. So Dave King, the only drummer, the guy's the drummer in The Bad Plus, he's the only drummer I've ever really been around who just cracks me up because he's so sly. He's just such a remarkable trickster when he's playing. He's got so much joy in his playing. What was that like having him come in and sort of shape what you had in mind for your musical vision? He shaped us a lot. Um, yeah. And when we were kind of figuring out the band, you know, we went and wanted to do our first, you know, real album. We we're like, who can we get to produce it? Dave King's name came up and we contacted him. He was able to do it. And he came in kind of like a whirlwind and just, he was like, all right, I wanted to meet you guys first. But now that I've heard you play, I really think you should be an all instrumental band. And I was like, wow, because, you know, everyone wants to hear more vocals usually. Yeah. But then, we thought about it for a minute and we're like, well, we really like playing a lot more. And if you think we can get the music across instrumentally, I mean, we'd love to be able to try to speak more through the instruments really. Mm -hmm. than yeah. Well, I mean, listen, it seems to be working. And I know Asheville, North Carolina is a great music town and certainly a, a town that's pretty open to new ideas, new approaches, new ways of being in the world musically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, listen, I think you're onto something. And uh, I appreciate your stopping by here. The record is, you know, again, it's your compositions and it's shaped by this wacky musical genius person. The Bad Plus is a great example of a band that's taken that instrumental approach and, and made it work in a very profound way. So I think they're onto something. Cool. Yeah. Let's get back to music. Welcome back, John Stickley Trio. Thanks. Wow, what an honor to be here at E-Town. Thank you.
John Stickley Trio. John Stickley on guitar, Lindsey Pruitt on the violin, Hunter Deacon on the drums. The record is called Maybe Believe. They're from Asheville, North Carolina. They'll be out at the very end of the show. Your visit to E-Town is made possible in part by the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District, or SCFD, one of the largest cultural funding mechanisms in the United States, supporting nearly 300 organizations in the greater Denver area. And by our diverse family of NPR affiliates and community stations, plus college and commercial stations, as well as our international stations and podcast subscribers worldwide. Thank you for your continued support. In case you tuned in late and you've missed some of this week's program, the E-Town Podcast will have this episode and others, along with content from past shows as well. It's available for free in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast directories. You're listening to E-Town. I'm Nick Forster. I'd like to say hello to our listeners who hear E-Town on stations like WFHB in Bloomington, Indiana, on KDLG in Dillingham, Alaska, and on WVPE in Elkhart, Indiana. First of all, thanks for listening. Second of all, if you want some more information about any of the things we're up to, check us out online at etown.org. Okay, so far so good. You guys holding up all right? We've learned about... Uh, We've learned about depaving and making community spaces while destroying old pavement and things like that. We've heard a powerful instrumental trio, and we're going to revisit one of the uh, bright young voices in acoustic music. If you would, um, re-welcome Jared and, and Billy and Royal along with Billy Strings. Welcome them back to the stage here at E-Town. Thank you so much. You 
spot in the race You can cling to your madness You can swim down and hold your breath I'll be standing on dry ground with all of the rest I'd love to show you what you wouldn't go I'd love to take you but I know the way you roll You see it your way, I see it mine and I'll be fine Billy Strings, along with his band Royal Masada on the bass, Jared Walker on mandolin, Billy Failing on the banjo. The record's called Turmoil and Tinfoil. Man, oh man. Folks, we've got time for one more song. We're gonna get everybody out on stage for this last number. I wanna thank all our guests this week. Thanks to the John Stickley Trio from coming out from Asheville, North Carolina. Thanks to um, our award winner, Arif Khan, helping to depave spaces and turn them into valuable, viable community spots. Thanks to Billy Strings and his band. Thanks to Helen and Ron Jolly, our volunteers, engineers. Thanks to all of you for being with us. I'm Nick Forster, hoping to be with us next week right here in E-Town. me the best that they can they'll sell me a suit and cut off my hair and send me to work in tall buildings it's goodbye to the sunshine goodbye to the dew goodbye to the flowers and goodbye I'm off to the subway, I mustn't be late I'm going to work in tall buildings E-Town's produced by a donor-supported nonprofit organization and recorded live at E-Town Hall. To comment about the show, make an award nomination, or get tickets to a live taping, Send an email to info at etown.org or visit our website at etown.org or connect with us on our two Facebook pages or Twitter. When I've retired and my life is my own I busted up all the pavement, now it's time to go on I wonder what happened betwixt and between Going to work in tall buildings And it's goodbye to the sunshine Goodbye to the dew Goodbye to the flowers And goodbye to you I'm off to the subway I mustn't be late Going to work in tall buildings The subway, I mustn't be late. Going to work in tall buildings.
This is a production of E-Town.